I am getting to the end of my wits. Many of you probably <laughs> probably think I got there a long time ago, that I, I, I exhausted my supply of wits a long time ago. Yeah, that's fair. Maybe so. But Donald Trump and the, the stark juxtaposition between a Kamala Harris candidacy and a Donald Trump candidacy is just so clear to me. It saddens me. It baffles me. I think I'm beyond bem bemusement, but uh, it baffles me that there's millions of Americans who see Donald Trump giving speeches and giving remarks, and they think, oh, that's, that's my guy. That's who I want to be, President of the United States of America and Commander-in-Chief of the most powerful military the planet Earth has ever known. And it's scary. He gave a speech yesterday, another rally. Ear seems to be healed from the assassination attempt, which is a video I'm going to do later. But when you see Donald Trump and he's confused and he's sopping wet with sweat, just unhealthy looking, I mean, just that alone should be enough to say, that's not my guy. But also, when he's telling America that America is a stupid country run by stupid people, Republicans are here for that. That's the message they want. They don't want hope. They don't want progress. They don't want a message to lead us into modernity. That's not what they want. They want to be told how stupid our country is. The same people who wave the flag and the Constitution and tie yellow ribbons around their, their, their porches for bringing the troops and supporting the troops. And they also are being told by their political leader, their cult leader, that America is stupid and they're here for it. Here's a brief, like five, six second clip. We're a dumping ground. We're a stupid country that's run by stupid people. That, to me, is the most troubling element of this the, as a secondary problem is the fact that he seems to be confused all the time, just flop sweat all the time, unhealthy, just sweating out gravy and Big Mac sauce from every pore. And I mentioned uh, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, me being a former United States Marine, this topic is near and dear. And it's something I have a little bit of expertise in, a little bit. I'm not General Milley or some seasoned, grizzled, 30, 40-year veteran. I did my time, though. So when Donald Trump, in a non-joking way, I mean, even if it was joking, it would be a problem. But when he asserts that there's no difference that the military would be benefit from putting NASCAR drivers and football coaches in charge because it's pretty much the same thing. It should give everybody pause about the, the security posture of the United States of America and what a clear and present danger this fucking misfit is and what he poses for the country. Watch this confusing flop sweat moment from Donald Trump. How you do it is amazing. It's so amazing. We should send you into, I've always said, get some of these guys. I have a lot of friends in that world. I don't know, I think, is it Roger Penske like a great guy too? Guy won, he won 20 Indianapolis 500s. This guy wins all the time. I mean, we appreciate talent. I said, let me use these guys to guide our military a little bit. When you can win so many races, that's okay, you know? You, you guide. Uh, same thing with coaches. You take some of the greatest football coaches, you put them at a table. What do you like, coach? Because in its own way, it's not so much really different. Br bring it in, Donald. Former commander-in-chief of the United States Armed Forces. Uh, it's different, brother. Being a, a, a competent tactician of combat is different than a football coach. Despite what Tommy Tuberville says, he's the most military person the world's ever known. Never served. Donald Trump never served. He had bone spurs, everybody. 
Oh, they hurt. I can't serve in combat. I can't answer the call of my country. I need a deferment. And because of the fact that he has zero military experience or respect for it, losers and suckers, embarrassments, uh, he thinks that it's, it's the same thing. Just put some NASCAR drivers there. They can strategically work it out and train our military to fight war. And MAGA worship this man. He's the cult leader. So whatever he says goes. And what's most alarming here is this is said in North Carolina, which has a large footprint of both veterans, but also active duty United States members, uh, uh, military members with their back the blue signs, these insurrection loving, dictator on day one loving morons. And then to amplify, to really drive home the point of the confusion, is Donald Trump once again doubling down, tripling down, quadrupling down, sextupling down on his rambling about a fictional serial killer character in Hannibal Lecter. He points out that people are worried about him bringing this up and says, no, it's not cognitive decline. It's serious. He wants to have you for din dinner. He's run over president of the United States and he's, the, he's it. He's the nominee for the Republicans. Confused. Dangerous. Watch this. You know, they go crazy when I say the late, great Hannibal Lecter. Okay, they say, why would he mention Hannibal Lecter? He must be cognitively in trouble. No, 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 these are real stories. Hannibal Lecter from Silence of the Lamb. He's a lovely man. He wants to have you for dinner. He'd like to have you for dinner. So look, the, the only thing I can really point to here about why he would keep bringing this up, it, it, it seems to me kind of um, like he must want to just act like a nutbag. So when he does, does say something nutty and it is driven by uh, delirium or confusion because of his advanced age and lack of cognitive ability, he can just say, oh, no, no, it's just like when I was talking about uh, Hannibal Lecter. It's the same thing. I was just joking. I'm doing it to troll you so you'll talk about it. There's strategy here. But MAGA doesn't care about that. Christian nationalists don't care about it. The authors of 2025 don't care because they will be running the show when Donald Trump is drifting off into the night. Anyway, uh, I'd love to know what you think about this. This is a stark contrast. This contest between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, if that's what it ended up being, it seems like that's what it's going to be is maybe the most important decision of your life to save American democracy. You're in this fight as well. And I hope that you recognize it as that. You can comment below. We can talk about it there. You can also call, leave me a voicemail, 714-576-4054. Of course, you can email me as always daily at dollamore.com. I absolutely would love to hear from you. Thank you for joining me today. If you want to help me produce these videos, click the join button below, become a channel member for $2 a month. Go over to patreon.com slash I doubt it podcast. Those are great ways to help support this work. Follow me on the social media. I'm everywhere at Dollamore. See you next time. Be genuine. Take care of one another.